Hello y'all, I'm Diana Brianne and this is my, my husband Jack, Jack and Diane. And uh, I've been talking a lot about Jack, you know, I've been trying to get him on here on uh, virtual media with me just for an interview. And so I'm going to interview my husband here of 30 years and our cancer journey. And it's his cancer journey, but I was on that journey with him and our family was on that journey with him. So we're here to specifically talk about um, what happened, how it happened, what we went through, and how we got to the place of being 100% cancer free. Okay, so um, we don't have this video planned out. We, um, we didn't really, um, you know, we don't have anything wrote down, so we're gonna kind of be all over the place with it. And this is my husband's, I think, real first time ever being on YouTube. And um, even though I've kind of caught him on camera a few times, but uh, that was it. So, honey, this is Jack of Jack and Diane. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and uh, for those of you that don't know our story, we met 30 years ago. And uh, actually, over 30 years ago now. And, uh, and um or as I always say, I was a cocktail waitress in a cocktail bar and he came and whisked me off, or as the song goes, and it was called, I'm a waitress, you were a waitress in a cocktail bar when I met you, mm. I think. And that then of course we had to get married because of the song, Jack and Diane, you know, we had to. <laughs> so, you know, we've lived a wonderful, amazing life. We've, you know, traveled the world and had just, we have three beautiful children who are adults now and uh, who also don't necessarily want to be on YouTube either. So it's just mom on YouTube, but you all see me dancing and you all see me um, do my wisdom. So today is a serious topic and there's a lot of people struggling with cancer. We are in no way giving advice, no way giving suggestions and no way giving information. We are just sharing our journey. And we may not necessarily go into specifics about it because we don't want people necessarily copying after us because there's not a one size shoe fits all when it comes to cancer, cancer treatments, okay? But we're gonna share our journey. So, honey, I mean, let's go back to last February, a year ago, a February, like a year and two months ago. Mm -hmm. What, what, what kind of happened? What do you remember uh, first? Well, I, uh, I developed a, uh Kind of an uncontrollable cough uh, where I couldn't get through a sentence without coughing and uh, long story short uh, we had it looked at and uh, they found a, a tennis ball sized tumor at the bottom of my throat and a couple other smaller tumors but uh, that was the primary one. And I, th I thought it was more like the size of an orange. It was closer to the size of an orange from what we from what our, we understood but prior to that um, what happened is he, um, I kept saying, Jack, this is not a cold. This is a dry cough. It's not a cold. There's something wrong. And I, I said to him, so uh, kind of fast forward about a week after he developed the cough, he called me from work. And what did you say? Uh, I was tired and I was coming home. But why? Because um, uh, I was coughing and uh, I was tired. So. Uh, and you had chest pain. Yeah, a little bit of chest pain, very little chest pain, um, but uh, it was unusual. I've never had chest pain, so I came very home. Very athletic golfer. Yeah, so I came home, uh, slept for about two hours, got up, still had uh, all the same symptoms, went to the emergency room, yep. and then uh, long story short. Uh, you the didn't next, want to wait to, at yeah. the emergency room, so you came yeah. home. So I came home, and my primary physician um, set up the uh, CAT scan for the next morning, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where they found the tumor. Well, well they, before they, found, they before they found yeah. the tumor, well, that's when they found the tumor. But um, you you came home, you were exhausted. Uh, those mm -hmm. couple weeks before, he was always exhausted, and he's never like that. He plays golf all the time, every day if he can. He plays no, golf, play golf almost every day. Believe me, every day. I work too. And he works too, but when he's not working, he's playing golf, and. So he went to bed and I said to him, as he was starting to fall asleep, I said, Jack, I think you, I, this is terrible to say. I said, but I think you have cancer. And I said, you know, cause we didn't know. 
So he said, well, when the doctor calls, if I'm asleep, you get the information. And the doctor called and I said, I know what you're gonna tell me. He called, it was like 5.30 in the evening and he was sleeping. And he said, how do you know? And I said, I just know, I just sense it. And he said, yes, there's a mass sitting next to his heart and to his lungs. And we're gonna go from there. And so now we'll fast forward like a couple weeks. We He went through CAT scans and testings mm -hmm. and to an oncology. Uh, we have a wonderful oncology um, part to the hospital here. We live in a great place if you're old or if you're sick. Um, it, it's got a great medical facility. Mm -hmm. And so you went to the oncologist. And uh, bottom line, he recommended uh, chemotherapy. A lot uh, of it, not yeah, a little, yeah. but like a truckload of chemotherapy. Yeah. Five uh, days a week over the course of? Uh, about three, four months. So. Three or four months. And let me tell you, it was brutal. Yeah, it was something I hope to not go through again. It was brutal. Yeah. And he, he got a, a, several different kinds of chemo at the same time. A lot of it, he was there in the chair for like eight hours a day. And I um, mean, it was, it was tough. Every time he finished a round of chemo, he would get some kind of something, something, you know, we're not even talking hair loss. He, he did lose his hair. He lost mm -hmm. his eyebrows. He lost his eyelashes. Um, but I mean, he'd get just distended, like the belly would become huge. I'd gain about 18 pounds of water weight Each uh, time. the week that uh, I got the chemotherapy. Yeah. And then uh, I had two weeks off where uh, basically that was to purge it. And so probably the last two days before I started chemo again, you start to feel, I don't want to say normal, but you start yeah. to feel less bad. So uh, the one week on, two weeks off was uh, pretty good. It worked out well as far as uh, being able to uh, recover from the, uh, the chemotherapy. But you would come home and you would sleep a great deal of the time. Mm, I slept a ton because uh, yeah. chemotherapy uh, reduced my red blood cells. Uh, and that was one of the, the, uh, the biggest things because I was still playing some golf a little bit during that time frame on the last two days, two to three days before I started chemo again. Uh, yeah. But eventually the, uh, the red- Couldn't keep him away from yeah, the, the golf. The red blood cells, <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was uh, a job just walking up to the tee box. Yeah. Um, I'd get extremely tired because uh, my red blood cells got uh, lower and lower as I went through the chemo. Yes, yes, and your tumor markers were sky high. His tumor markers were just absolutely way, way, way. And I mean, it didn't look good, to be honest. I mean, he had several different tumors, lymphoma. Um, the, the biggest one was by the heart and the lungs and the other ones were kind of scattered around his body. One by the adrenal gland, a couple by the spine, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it was like, it, it was, I have to tell you, I was so traumatized and I was so scared. And of course I went into full action. As my husband knows, I began to take over everything. Not that I had to, but I, I just did. I just took over everything. And um, you continued the cough while he was getting the chemo. And during that time, I started to have stomach issues. And I just kind of chalked it up to maybe stress or to nerves. And, um, and about six weeks into your chemo, all of a sudden, I got sick. And ended up in the emergency room with Jack being there with me, as sick as he was. He stood over the sink in the in the while I was laying on the gurney and practically throwing up into the sink from the chemo, and but he wanted to be there for me. So I was sick, mm -hmm. and yet he was he was there for me as sick as he was. And yet by then he had lost his hair. I mean he was feeling absolutely miserable. I was terribly terribly sick, and I've t I'm not going to go into great detail about mine because that's what not this video is about but we believe it was an allergic reaction that took place and um, um, they couldn't figure it out at first. And I was sick for about three months during that time. And, uh, but I kept on going because I knew I had to be strong to get us through this time. And Jack amazingly stayed strong through this whole thing. We're, we're kind of two people with strong, determined mm -hmm. personalities. And we have three young adult kids 
who are adults, but they're young adults. They're in their early 20s and, you know, they, they were there for us and yet we did not want to put too much on them, you know, because, you know, we didn't want to scare them any more than, than we were already scared. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, so you got through the chemo and um, uh, you continued on. I know we're missing all kinds of important details in here, but um, you, you were always healthy, never yeah. sick. Mm -hmm. very athletic he, a runner used to run all the time everything we worked out we were workout machines right and um, he's at least at least it's I guess that's what I would call but anyhow um, no I'm forever 29 though right honey you are yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, and so this is the thing is that he got through the chemo, and at that point, he had the CAT scans and everything redone. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to monopolize the conversation, but there's just so much to it. It's easy to forget, and he's not used to being on YouTube. Um, yeah, so after we uh, finished the chemo, uh, then we waited about, uh, I think, a month, uh, six weeks, uh, got more CAT scans, and... Uh, it was 25% reduction. Yeah, yeah. So, then, in that, uh, other words... After the chemo and everything was done and complete, it was 25% gone. So that meant that still 75% was there. The tumor markers were still very off and they had come down some and the masses had come down some. Yeah. And then uh, after about uh, another month, they took... Uh, what did we do right at that point though? Because I just said this I, is... Well, I was. you put me on the, uh, the okay. diet. Um, uh, it Actually, was, before we started the chemo. No, no, we didn't really go hard and heavy until until after the chemo. Oh, okay. After, All right. Yeah, more after the chemo. We did. We we started juicing and things like that, which I've always juiced uh, right in the very beginning. But we went uh, with the permission of his doctors. Um, you know, we went on a very holistic. I'm not going to go into details about what the diet is because it, it's pretty well known on the internet what kind of diets. You know, um, if you if you research, um, but I don't want to give out specifics because there's not a one size that fits all for everybody. It just happened to seem to work for us. And um, but I will tell you, we eliminated any kind of refined sugar. I will give you that much about our diet. And it was extremely healthy, extremely rigid diet. I put us on. I would have to go to the grocery store every day, get fresh green leafy vegetables, organic and all of that and we did that for months for several several months and so during that time there was a second cat scan mm -hmm. and yeah. this is maybe like three months after and whether it's a result of the diet the chemo or simply a miracle uh, or all three we don't really know and so three months in your tumor markers and your tumors or your masses were down 75 percent yeah negligible 75 percent at that point so then how many months after was it where well, we got the hundred percent um so that was like what two months ago about, about three three and a half months so after 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 the chemo no after the second one after the second cat scan uh, a month, month and no, a it was more than that we'll september right and then uh, October, I got one more. But when was the last one that you had that we found out? That was in, after January. Uh, yeah, I had one in February. Okay, so it was in February that we got that basically from our understanding from everybody that there was no cancer. That, that all the tumor markers were in normal range and the um, there was no masses. Nope. No masses. No, no masses they could see. And, and believe me, a year ago, he would sit here and all he would do is cough. Just cough nonstop because of the pressure from the tumor that was pressing on his lungs and his heart. And they couldn't do radiation. They couldn't do surgery because of the location of it. And so when they told us that everything was normal um, two months ago, three months ago, I mean, we're just... 
to us it's a miracle however God does miracles whether he did it through the doctors the chemo the diet that we went on because it was very very rich now someone did ask me the other day they said mm. well your husband is he still on the diet and are you still on the diet honey not so much not so much <laughs> So I have to be honest with you here, and I'm going to be honest, you know, we went on vacation down to the beach, and when we were there, um, I said, you can eat what you want, but when we get back, you've got to, you know, because we love the food, you know, at the restaurants down there, and I said, when you get back, you got to go right back on your diet, the, the very strict way of eating, and he didn't. I got used to the good food again. So... Although there's certain things I don't eat. Okay. I, there's uh, um, certain foods that, uh, you know, after not eating them for six, eight months, I just uh, don't really miss them anymore. So I, I don't eat as holistically as I should, but... Uh, um, it, he's there, not there eating some, like yeah, he did. Yeah, but I, I don't... There, there's certain, like, you know, I, I don't like fried foods or fries, things like that. I don't eat those anymore, but I still love meat. Right. Well, we kind of modified our, what we call the anti-cancer diet. We modified it to fit him and yet it was a very strict diet. And, um, you know, so we don't know whether it was the diet, the chemo, the combination, or simply a miracle. But right now, as we sit here, from our understanding, he's 100% cancer free. And so we don't take that for granted. And we pray that it continues to be that way, even though he's not on the diet that I put him on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, which I feel like it was extremely, and it played an extremely important part to this. And, um, but, you know, it was the scariest time. We've had a couple scary moments in our life when our daughter took sick. She's doing fine now, but this is maybe seven years ago when she took suddenly sick. And that was a very scary time. About 12 years ago, um, when I ran into a wooden hanger that was, I plowed into a wooden hanger, knocked me to the floor, and they thought maybe I had had a brain aneurysm. So that was a very, very scary period of time. And uh, we've had, you know, just different times in life that, mm -hmm. you know, it, it've been difficult and challenging. So no one gets through life without their difficulties and challenges. And we've had an extraordinarily blessed life, extraordinary. And so, you know, you get a chuck hole now and then, and this was a pretty deep chuck hole that we went through. I do have to say, I was very scared. And when I got sick, I was, it really floored me. And, um, but he continued to play golf the whole time he was going through chemo, didn't you? Mm, yes. Not right. very good, but at the time, because he's, a, good, he's a great very, golfer. He's a great not golfer. Not very often, but I, I enjoyed uh, getting outside and, you know, playing the best yeah. I could. And <laughs> so what are your side effects now from the chemo? Uh, I got neuropathy in my legs and hands. So neuropathy, if you don't know, is, is like a tingling. You can't, you can't feel... And although he perfectly uses his hands and his feet, obviously, because he golfs all the time, but but some things like if it, with dexterity, you, yeah, loss of feeling and numbness. Yeah, and that's from the chemo, not from the cancer, and that that has not been restored for him yet. Um, but we're praying for that miracle too, that 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 goes away. And so you know, this video is kind of like a, mm -hmm. a informal, quick what do you call it, synopsis? Synopsis of, of our journey. There was so much more to it, so much more than what, what, you're, what we're telling you now. But, you know, we could probably go on for hours and hours. And like I said, there's no one size fits all. We don't want to give someone advice and then follow what work, maybe worked for us and it may not work for them or vice versa. You have to find your own answers. You have to surround yourself with the right professionals, the right, the right professionals, the right answers, the right solutions, and keep your faith during this. You know, I have to say one thing. Jack it was so positive through this whole thing. He drove himself to chemo and drove him home himself home from chemo. And I mean, as sick as he was, he didn't want anybody else to drive. You you stayed so positive. 
when I was falling apart. And I'll never forget when I was so sick myself during that time um, and they didn't know what it was. And I'm all better now, okay? But at the time, I was so sick. I couldn't sleep. I was so uncomfortable without going into all the details. And I remember being in bed. He was laying in bed and he was so sick. And I, I was pacing the bedroom because I just was so miserable. And he said to me, honey, if I could take away your sickness right now, I would. I mean, he, you know, is that love? I mean, he really, really loved me. And to be at the hospital when I was sick, standing over the sink, but he wouldn't leave. He wouldn't leave my side. And I never left his side. I was there for him. I was sitting up at three o'clock in the morning researching holistic ways to cure cancer. And I would send him all the videos and it kind of woke you up. Mm -hmm. And um, But I was constantly, constantly, I was constantly in the kitchen preparing holistic, healthy meals for us. Um, coming up with as much research as I could, what would work to um, cure his cancer. And, uh, and pray. We prayed. We prayed like, you know, all the time. I prayed. I fasted. We did everything. I mean, it's been mm -hmm. a, a crazy journey. You know, one I'd never want to be on again. When I, I pray that I pray Jack stays healthy for the rest of, till you're a hundred and I'm 105 because I'm five years older. So, <laughs> and we do, he works out every day. I work out every day. We're doing everything we can from our end and pray that he stays healthy. I stay healthy. We live to over a hundred and we can sit here and make more videos together. Right. Yes. Honey. And you know, the, he, he just got in from golfing by the way. And, um, so he hasn't even shaved. So, but I told him, I said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You just sit here with me and, and you know, he's never done anything like this before on camera with, with us for YouTube. Cause that's kind of my, my thing, but I just wanted to come on here and talk about this topic. So if you're going through cancer, I guess the best things we could say is to find the right professionals, um, get the right advice and make the right choices and keep your faith. And like I said, you know, the reason we're not sharing all the details because we did take certain supplements during that time, but we're not going to say which ones because, you know, if people think that, you know, every cancer is different and every situation is different. But I believe that that cancer's, cancer is just sort of healthy cells that got sick. And you just got to make them well again and um, somehow and that's kind of what we kind of love those cancer cells back to good health so to speak I guess is the only way to put it mm -hmm. so we did it honey you, you came on camera with me Thank so you. and I love you I and love you're you. absolutely wonderful and we are Jack and Diane so much love we thank you may God bless you stay healthy and I hope if you enjoyed um, our video that you give us a thumbs up. Okay. Thank you. May God bless you. Bye-bye.